Hello, my name is Karen Shepherdson, and welcome to the Leaders Room by the ICLIF Leadership and Governance Centre. Today, we are delighted to have with us Ched Meng Tan, or just Meng as he prefers to be called, a Google pioneer, an award-winning engineer, a New York Times best-selling author, a thought leader and a philanthropist. Meng now serves with Google's people development team. His current job description is enlighten minds, open hearts and create world peace. At Google, Meng led the creation of a groundbreaking mindfulness-based emotional intelligence course called Search Inside Yourself, which was featured on the front page of the business section of the New York Times. Search Inside Yourself is also the title of Meng's New York Times best-selling book, which he hopes will eventually contribute to world peace in a meaningful way. Outside of Google, Meng is co-chair of the One Billion Acts of Peace campaign, which has been nominated by, Nobel, by seven Nobel Peace Laureates for the Nobel Peace Prize. Meng hopes to see every workplace in the world becoming a drinking fountain for happiness and enlightenment. When Meng grows up, he wants to save the world and have lots of fun and laughter doing it. Welcome to Malaysia. Thank you. And to the Leaders Room. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have this opportunity to speak with you. Mm -hmm. So may I begin by just asking you one question first. Mm -hmm. um, so what makes a data-loving Google mm -hmm. engineer mm -hmm. like yourself decide to embark on a study of mindfulness and emotional intelligence and your work in search inside yourself? Uh, it was very simple. I, I only have a, a very simple aspiration. All I wanted to do was to create the conditions for world peace in my lifetime. One yeah. tiny little goal. That's right. <laughs> and, and so I asked myself, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. right. And I figured uh, one way to do that uh, is scale inner peace, inner joy, and compassion worldwide. Inner peace? Inner peace, mm -hmm. inner, joy, inner joy, compassion okay. worldwide. Wow. Right. How do I do that? Figure it out. The way to do that is to align these three qualities, peace, joy, compassion, with success and profits. Mm -hmm. Because if people, we teach people to be, to be successful, mm -hmm. and with peace, joy, compassion being the necessary and unavoidable side effect, then it will spread because then people want to do that, do the training. So there's a effect? Uh, uh, more than that, appealing to self-interest. Okay. Because if we go to go around talking about goodness, mm -hmm. people will like, yay, and then they go home, nothing changed. Success, profits, uh -huh. and the goodness is unavoidable as a side effect, and they contribute to world peace. People say, "Yeah, yeah, sign me up," right? Because they don't, so they don't mind contributing to world peace. Okay. So that was that's my skillful means. So being and, successful and that hmm. leading itself to world. Peace. Yes, yes. The, the skillfulness is to make it in such a way where the where the goodness is unavoidable as a side effect. Okay. Yeah, and then so the way to do that, uh, then. Mindfulness and emotional intelligence. Yeah. So, Ming, tell me a little bit more about mm -hmm. mindfulness and mm -hmm. emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. If we were to ask you to describe it in terms, mm -hmm. what would that be for you know, right. the rest of us? Yeah. Mindfulness is very easy. It is described as moment to moment, non judging attention. That is all. So, basically, paying attention to this current moment. Mm -hmm. And whatever arises, arises. Whatever uh, seizes, seizes. So that the frame of mind. Uh, anybody can do that. It's, it's fairly simple. The hard part is maintaining it yeah. over, over a stretch of time. Yeah. yeah. I so, can imagine that. Yeah. I, was a, I hope you don't mind if I interrupt you. In yeah. this 24-7, um, 365, yes. we're all connected. Yes. How do you maintain this mindfulness? And is there mm. a shortcut way to do it? Uh, yes and yes. So, uh, okay. the way to do this is practice. Okay. Yes. So, one way to look at it is this. every time when you bring attention to the breath and it wanders away, when you bring it back, it's like doing one bicep curl for the brain, for a prefrontal cortex. Right? So if you bring the attention back a lot, mm -hmm. so if you do this a lot, this becomes strong. Mm -hmm. If you bring attention back a lot, this becomes strong. Then eventually that's how you can hold your attention on the breath effortlessly. Yeah. And then, so then the question is how do I get there? Is that easy? Uh, I think so. Okay. Uh, shall, we, shall we do one exercise right now? Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
for one breath, bring full at total attention, but gentle, total but gentle, to one in breath and one out breath. Let's do it now. Thank you. You notice I calm now already a little bit more. Yes, the reason you calm. There are two reasons. The first is physiological, mm -hmm. because by by paying attention to the breath, you tend to have slow deep breaths. You notice that it slow down, slows down. Uh, when you have slow deep breath, you are stimulating your vagus nerve, mm -hmm. and that slows down the heartbeat, lowers the blood pressure, and so on already. So that's one. And then there's a psychological reason which is that uh, when you're fully, remember I said total attention to the present, when you're fully in the uh, to, to be worrying, you need to be in the future. To be regretful, you need to be in the past. So when you're fully in the moment, free from regret and worry for one moment. And that's how you get one moment of rest. Right. So in other words, uh, it is working already. Uh, there's another data point to show that it actually works really well in a small amount of time, which is uh, if you look at tennis players, the, the best tennis players in the win the Wimbledon. Uh, sorry, the best versus the very best. Right? Okay. Those who go to Wimbledon and those who win. Okay. What's the difference? Uh, according to one study, that I, the difference is that the very best in the world, they are able to relax their body, rest their body and mind between sets. So 10, 15 seconds. They can rest it so that when they begin the next set, they are more rested than their opponent. And if they do it over many sets, that's how they sustain the hyper. Yes, yes. So I read about it. I haven't met, at that time, I haven't met a world-class tennis player. So I didn't know whether it was true. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up meeting this guy called Novak. So I asked Novak. Uh, uh, and Novak said, it's true and not just true. Novak says, he says at his level, mm -hmm. tennis is no longer a physical game. It's a mental. It's all about how you can maintain the presence of mind, the entire game. Would you say that attention is equivalent to focus? Uh, Would you say that? Yes and no. So attention is uh, what you are directing your, your awareness to at the moment. So focus is the ability to, to hold it. The attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really yeah. So, so uh, to finish up, the, so therefore if you just do one breath mm. once a day, mm -hmm. that already puts you on a path. And if you do one breath a day and you become aware of the benefits at the moment, then you familiarize the mind with the benefits, then the mind wants to do some more. And that's how you generate to have a, 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 what do you call that, a solid practice. So, let me ask you this question. About breath and yes. holding attention, focusing on the present. How does that play out mm. in terms of the business context when you mm. go to? Right. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay. Yes. What is this about yes. Okay. How do you right. deal with that? Uh, it is extremely important for leadership. Okay. Example: You are in a meeting room, and there's a crisis, mm -hmm. and everybody's panicking except for you alone. Right? Mm -hmm. Karen, because Karen has the ability to calm the mind. Been training in this, and everybody's panicking. You alone calm the mind and think clearly. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, everybody is going to look at you, and they'll feel in their heart. Either. Yeah, and the reason is because that is leadership. Part of leadership is the ability to think under fire. Yeah. Right. Grace so, under fire. Grace, yes, under, grace fire. under fire. Also <laughs> clear thinking, under fire. Mm. Yeah, everybody, you're able to say, okay, this is what happened, this is what you should respond, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. go, oh, wow. Right, you inspire yes. leadership, uh, you inspire followership. followership. So, uh, and that turns out to be highly trainable. Right? If mm -hmm. you bring attention to your breath a lot, then that's when your prefrontal cortex becomes very strong. That's when you can do this. Mm -hmm. So this alone has mm -hmm. direct implications on leadership. And then the other skills that we do in Search Inside Yourself, mm -hmm. every one of them has implications on leadership as well. So for example, uh, self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Being aware of uh, the process of emotion mm -hmm. happening in real time. Mm -hmm. right? If you can do that, I mean the best people we ever work for mm -hmm. are the type of people who have that awareness. Yeah. Right? So, and that's again trainable. Yeah, yeah. It's, it just seems like there's this calmness in some people, mm -hmm. but you're saying that uh, it's not something that's inborn and actually anybody can train to be that. It is something inborn and, and. It can be trained. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's like running. There are some mm -hmm. people who are born to run 
faster than the rest. Mm -hmm. And everybody can train themselves to run to faster. To run faster. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. Um, are there any obstacles when you begin mm -hmm. to approach an audience and speak about this whole idea of mindfulness mm -hmm. and emotional intelligence? What kind of pushback do you get, if any? Mm. I actually haven't gotten any pushback, which oh, really? is surprising. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the reason I think is because uh, I do a few things. So one is the science. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very yeah. rigorous about the science. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because it's a professional hazard. Mm -hmm. I'm an engineer. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm not rigorous about science, I get very embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the professional hazard turns out to be, to be a, a feature. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, uh, again, another professional hazard is precision. Mm -hmm. The way I use language is very precise. So, for example, uh, a, a meditation teacher will say, let's go deep into emotions. Mm -hmm. And the engineer will like, like, what is deep, what is shallow? How you, how you measure? How do you measure? How do you quantify that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, so, the language I use is, let's create a high resolution perception into mm. the process of emotion. Mm -hmm. And people get that. Okay. It's no longer, it's no longer uh, fluffy. Mm. Okay. So, the precision. Uh, the third thing I do is, uh, is application. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, the calmness of mind thing, mm -hmm. not just it's good for your mind, good for your soul, but this is how you apply in a work setting. Right? This is how okay. you apply in leadership. Okay. So because of that, I think it's, it becomes, it becomes unfluffy. It becomes mm. useful. Mm. And that's why Tangible there's no pushback. Kind of, yeah. yes. mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest, not pushback, but the biggest difficulty uh, is sustaining the practice. Mm -hmm. It is, so I, I introduce this to, to people and they take, it, they take it on, they say, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. They take it on, for some large percentage of them, it changed their lives. Mm -hmm. And then, after a few weeks of, of practice, they table off. Right? And I observe the same thing in, in physical exercise. exercise right? You yeah. this little exercise, it's like they do it for eight weeks, they say, oh my god, this changed my life, I'm going to do this every day for a life. Mm -hmm. And after, after a few weeks, eh, eh, eh. It just goes down. Yeah, so yeah. the same challenge presents itself in meditation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing I face right now. And uh, what do you recommend for people you know, who go through this yeah. you know, high excitement and ah. then slowly uh -huh. going down? Uh -huh. So if you look at the physical analogy, mm. uh, what is the solution? Like the solution to, to get people to continue exercise? Mm -hmm. The couple, the two or three. One is community, like mm -hmm. the gym body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, the other one is gamification. We gamify the exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Speak more, tell yeah. me. It's called sports. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's what engineers speak. Geek speak. Okay. Geek speak, yeah. yeah so you, you, turn it in, you turn physical fitness into a game. Yeah. Right? Uh, you use joy as a vehicle. Okay. So uh, similar mechanisms can apply in meditation. Okay. So community, you just get a sitting body. Right? Okay. So you get accountable to each other. Right. Uh, the gamification is hard in mm. meditation because uh, sports is necessarily stimulus driven. Mm -hmm. uh, Meditation is necessarily stimulus free. Okay. So how do you yeah. create that, right? Mm -hmm. So the answer is, uh, it turns out that when you are sitting in meditation, mm -hmm. that, and the mind comes down, there is a joy that arises spontaneously because of that peace of mind. Okay. Yeah. And there's actually a technical term uh, in Pali language or in the Sanskrit language, sukha. Sukha. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, for a, a seasoned meditator, mm. After some amount of practice, you reach the point where you can ac access sukha on demand. Right? Wow. Then you can, like, every sitting is joyful. Then it sustains the practice. Wow. So the question is, how do we do this, make it easier for beginners? Mm. And I, sort of, I think I figured it out, uh, which is to front load the process with joy. Okay. So right from the beginning, right from the first breath. Okay. Remember when we did exercise, did I ask you to think, see whether there's a joyful component? I think um, I forgot to ask. Tell you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, I did ask tell you to see there's a peace component. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the next time you do this, mm -hmm. see if there's also a joy component. Very mm -hmm. subtle amount of like, wow. Mm -hmm. right? And the more the mind looks at it, the more mm -hmm. the mind becomes familiar with it, mm -hmm. and then the more the mind can bring it up. Oh. So that's how you front front load the joy okay. in the beginning. Okay. And then you, you can, after a while, that sustains the practice. Mm -hmm. Um, as you speak about these things at Eclipse, mm -hmm. we um, subscribe to the definition of leadership. Mm. For us, it's about harnessing energy mm. so that you can create a better future. Han harnessing energy. Okay. Harnessing energy. Yes. And uh, this energy, you need this energy because whenever you implement any kind of change, mm -hmm. there's always resistance yes. and you need to be able to overcome this resistance. Yes. And you need to call upon an intrinsic sort of energy that resides in you. That's right. So, 
Does mindfulness actually help? I mean, in that sense, in terms of the energy bit? For the leader or for... Or for, for the leader and maybe even for the followers as well. Uh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so the couple of pieces, I can, and I'm trying to think of which one is most important. It's mm -hmm. not yet clear right now. Okay. Uh, but uh, the piece that stands out in my mind is the motivation piece. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that one of the big pieces of uh, emotion intelligence is actually motivation. Okay. Right, which is finding, uh, going, searching within us, searching, searching inside yourself, and finding my your my core inner values. Okay. What do I care about? What makes me happy? What are my right. purposes? What gives me meaning? And so on. Right. Right. So once you find that, then you you are more able to figure out what works. What can I do in my work mm -hmm. that align with those uh, those priorities in my life? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Then, uh, if you have that conviction, uh, as as a leader, people can see it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for example, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, he wasn't an easy person to work with, mm. but <laughs> he has a few things going for him that are very strong, mm -hmm. and one of them is this, is this conviction. Okay. Like, we're doing we're doing this, and, and it shows that people mm -hmm. want to follow him. The other thing that Steve Jobs does very well which is surprising at, f at, at first glance, mm -hmm. but it makes sense once you take a uh, closer look, which is that uh, he, he is about, he's not about Steve. He's mm -hmm. about creating greater good for the world. He's yeah. about creating beautiful products that people can use. Yes, yes. So it's, it goes beyond glorifying Steve and mm -hmm. aligning Steve's pocket. Yeah. And because of that, people buy into the vision. Mm -hmm. So they work with him even though he's difficult. Mm -hmm. so, so there are a couple of components, one, the vision and also the going beyond self. Mm -hmm. Well, um, since we're on the topic of leadership, uh, can I just ask very quickly, um, is there any particular, when I say a leader, uh, that stands out for you? Would, well, who would that be? Is, is there anybody? A leader who stands out? Mm. Uh, there, are, there are a couple. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the names that come to my mind, uh, uh, George Washington, mm -hmm. uh, Gandhi, mm -hmm. uh, I think this, this two are this most strongly stand out in mind. Uh, George Washington, uh, to me, mm -hmm. could be the most, the most important uh, president in the history of the United States. And because he gave up power. He gave up power? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he was as successful as the, as the president, as mm -hmm. a leader. Mm -hmm. And that he was so successful, uh, somebody suggested that he declared himself King George. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he scolded the guy. Oh. Uh, and then after two terms, he voluntarily gave up the presidency. And because of that, he's created the uh, presidents. Wow. Right. So mm -hmm. to me, that I mean, you look at other revolutions. Most mm -hmm. revolutions tend to fail mm -hmm. because the the revolutionary rebel became the new dictator. Mm -hmm. right. And because of George Washington, we didn't have that in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So so that's one. And his character as well. He's yeah, he's always serving the greater good, mm -hmm. and glorifying himself. Uh, the other one, Gandhi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, amazing every way. Yeah, so I, I watched the Gandhi uh, movie when I was 13, I think. Yeah, that changed my life. When I grew up, I want to be like, just like that guy. Yeah, so when I met Arun, Arun uh, Gandhi, uh, Gan Gandhi's uh, grand grandson, I, I thank him personally. Thank to, to your grandfather, changed my life. Fantastic. Ming, I mean, it's been wonderful talking to you. You know, I really enjoyed this short conversation. Um, <clears throat> so thank you for taking time. And, uh, I just want to say I'm Karen Shepherdson signing off from the Leaders Room brought to you by the Eclipse Leadership and Governance Centre. Thank you.